Hello, my name is Chloe Gibson and in this video I'll be answering task 3 of the assignment BSBINN601. So the first question is, describe the five features of a well-managed change. A well-managed change is where there has been consideration into all aspects of the proposed change, following the process all the way through from recognition of a change to a need for a change to the successfully installed change at the other end. The five features of this would be, firstly, identify the requirement for the change. There are many drivers for change, but it is important that it is in line with the objectives of the company. It can be necessary to implement change plans if the company is not going in the direction intended in their plans for the future. It can also be necessary if there are business opportunities, management decisions or performance gaps. It is necessary to analyse threats to the proposed change possibly by personal analysis, as once a company has this information, they can identify changes that need to be made and link them back to the objectives. Number two, organize who you are going to communicate with. Identifying the levels of involvement the different people are going to have and how you're going to get them on board with the project. At this time, you need to emphasize how important the need for the change that you have identified is and show how bad things are going to be if it is not done. You need to make everyone be on board with you as resistance could make it hard for the change to be implemented. Communication is very important and it keeps everyone on the same page and makes the plan move along effectively. If you remain transparent in your communication, then people are more likely to believe what you are saying and go along with it. Number three, develop a change management plan. A well-managed change has to, be the, has to have the backbone of a strong change management plan. This can be a written document that specifies in writing the events that are to happen, how, when, with what resources and budget, once the change takes place. It is necessary to have this as it compiles all of the planning stages onto paper. It means everyone has the same level of understanding and what is happening throughout, highlighting accountability of actions of those that are not completed properly. With a good change management plan, there is less excuse for any error from any party once the plan is implemented. The plan will remind everyone of the steps that need to be taken and stop any holdups once the change is set in motion. Number four, implement the change. Once you have got to this stage of the planning, you are able to start implementing the plan. This is where you involve all of those that have cho you have chosen uh, and put forward to plan the project. It is the responsibility of the project team leader to make sure that the implementation follows every step of the plan that you have made and stays on course and meets the end goals and objective identified at the first stages of planning. It is important to keep everyone on board, positive and motivated throughout the change so that it embeds effectively. Number five, monitor and record process, progress and adjust where needed. It is one of the most important parts of the well-managed change process that progress is recorded effectively. It is important to review the process of the, uh, the progress of the plan because there's been a lot of hard work involved in the planning and it can be easy to run out of steam by the time the implementation takes place. It has to be monitored to see whether aspects of the project are going to plan. If they are not, then the actions have to be taken to get the project back on track. It has to be seen the objectives are met. Simply putting a plan onto paper and organising the people does not mean that the plan and the change has taken effect. Okay, question number two. Describe how you would develop a change management strategy for an organisation, including how to. Conduct a cost-benefit analysis for the change. A cost-benefit analysis is where you comprise a list of all the costs that are expected to occur during the change management process and compare them to the benefits that will or could occur. The list of costs can be things such as materials, cost of training or the cost of man hours and labour that has occurred. The benefits are harder to predict as they are, only what you pro oh, they are only what you project to happen. They can be the extra profit that has been made or intangible benefits. Intangible benefits are where there is not possible to put a number onto that benefit. These can be things such as increased band brand identity or greater consumer satisfaction. It is important to conduct a cost benefit analysis as it shows you it allows you to assess whether the proposed plan is going to be beneficial in the long term and helps you to get the investors, senior management and other people with interest in the project on board. All right. And next, identify the barriers to change. 
A barrier to the change is anything that may make it difficult or stop the proposed change from happening. It is important to identify the potential barriers so that you can prepare ahead solutions to them if they do arise. It also helps to look at the feasibility of the plan overall. Barriers to change include things such as low morale of the workforce, which would stop them from being accepting of the change. Those affected are much more likely to drag their heels and not comply with the plan once it takes effect. It also includes things such as low involvement in the plan or a fear of loss of power or status once the plan has happened. Those who feel this way feel that their job might be threatened and so are going to resist the change once it's imposed. All right, next, agree mitigation strategies. So following this on from the analysis of the costs and the identification of any potential barriers that would happen, it is important that you know how you're going to deal with these issues once they arise. Mitigating strategies is where you think of all the possible barriers and provide solutions for them. What exactly are you going to do once the barriers happen? This should all be documented into writing in the change management plan so that once the, the plan is implemented, it can become an easy point of reference and no time or resources are wasted trying to come up with solutions further down the track. Uh, impeding the rollout of the change. Mitigation strategies could include recruiting or developing an expert, especially when you've got new tech, it's easy to develop an internal export, expert so that they know the staff feel motivated to follow one of their comrades. Um, Involving the staff in the design of the change, you're ensuring that the workers understand the need for change and the benefits that it will have for them. Making sure to highlight this throughout. All right, next, develop a change management project, project plan. A change management project plan is important because it acts as a form of communication to everyone involved in the plan to have clarity in the events that are to happen. It allows for the project team manager to organise people, materials and sections of the budget so it can move along together. For example, it's no use having the trainer turn up for a training session after there's been no staff hired to attend it. It also makes it easier to adjust components of the project if other things do not go as planned within the time frames expected. For this to happen, the change management plan has to be clear and easily understandable. Listing all of those that are involved in the plan, the objectives of the proposed change, timelines, budgets, mitigation strategies, ways of monitoring progress and reporting any changes that need to happen. If the change management plan is created effectively, then there will be no, um, no challenges along the way. Right, next, uh, obtaining approval from the relevant authorities. It is needed when making the plan to obtain the approval from relevant authorities be it senior management, investors or auditors, because they can be very influential as to how the plan is to work out in the end. People in these positions have the power to make it impossible to proceed with the process. Asking for their approval allows them to make revisions to the plan and also allows them to feel included early on, making it more likely that they have compliance later on in the plan. Next, assign resources to the project and agree reporting protocols. You have to assign resources to the project and agree on the timing alongside other resources in the plan. It is necessary because there are often many components that can be needed, including people, materials, training, etc. And if they do not follow and assist each other in the sequence that they are needed, then they can hold up the change. If the rollout of the plan looks messy and unorganised, then those who are involved could possibly lose motivation and lessen the impact the change has had. It is then needed at the last step of the plan to record it, how you're going to report the process of the plan as it is happening. You need to include a review or schedule in the project management plan that lets different people know how they're going to be reviewed and how they can report problems directly to you. This is likely by weekly meetings or email conversations, daily briefings, etc. But everyone needs to know how they can come to you to report an issue. If they go unnoticed, then might come much bigger problems down the line. All right, question number three. Describe how you would implement the change management strategy, including how to. Develop and implement a communication education plan. Communication plans can be implemented in a variety of ways, such as training sessions, consultations and briefings. They have to involve all of the people involved and affected by the change. The communication plan must be well thought out as to achieve the desired income. Uh, income sorry, output. This is to get everyone on board and excited about the change. It needs to be delivered in such a way that promotes the benefits of the change, how it will make those affected lives easier or better in some way. 
It's to cover what is to happen briefly, but focus mainly on easing the concerns of the people, creating create. Um, creating creative methods to get the messages to stick inside of their heads and um, yeah, what main messages you want to include in the briefing, it needs to stick, it needs to go home and um, think about that, not anything negative that they may be worrying about. Also making sure that those delivering the presentation are positive about the change the whole way through. Next, uh, how Consult with relevant groups and individuals for the input in the change process. You should get the opinions of people as there are different viewpoints and ideas, failings and barriers that may not have been identified up until this point. You need to include a good cross-section of managers, representatives from the workforce, people from different departments and roles and people who have been there for different lengths of time. You can do this by simply drawing names from a hat or offering volunteers from different sections of the people. This makes for more accurate judgment of what people will think of the change. It's important when you're recording this information that you do it in a way that doesn't just um, allow the most prominent people to speak up. You need to have pieces of paper, you know, different methods of getting the information from them so that it's fair across the board. Um, Seeking these opinions and acting on them will make all those involved feel valued and more likely to fo follow the changes. It is important to record all those comments made at the consult and discuss each one at the senior meeting afterwards. Following the meeting, there should be a document published or email sent out that shows the considerations of all of the points made and whether any changes has come from them. You want those to in involved in the consultation to feel like you've listened and valued their opinions. Right, next, to identify and respond to any barriers to the change. Although you have identified the potential barriers to change, there may be more resistance than you once thought, and changes it once the change is in motion. You can identify any barriers that are forming by informing people of what is happening or listening to their concerns, negotiating to agree on common ground where there is necessary to do so. If you do these things, you'll realise that it's what people are unhappy about as it's happening and you're able to mitigate the issues easier and earlier. A good project leader will respond to barriers by uh, expecting barriers in the first place, not being blind to the idea that things could happen in the way of um, the progress, by empathising with those that are affected, allowing them to vent when needed. Being transparent in communication to avoid rumours starting as these can be detrimental to the plan. Emphasise the benefit of the change and making sure that all those involved with implementing the change are positive and enthusiastic about it from start to finish. This will pass down to those employees for, um, that the change is imposed upon and make them more compliant. Okay, next we have actions and interventions and activities according to the plan. Activities and inter actions and interventions can include things such as surveys, team building, firing or hiring or job redesign. As leaders of the change, it is important to make sure these actions are carried out at the right time in order to be the most effective and in some cases to comply with legislations. Especially when firing people, it is important to allow the right periods of warning for such as any breach in legislation could end up with disciplinary action from authorities as well as disgruntled employees. It is important to follow the plan when completing these actions, to complete them at the right time and within the budget that has been allocated. Referring to the plan helps to keep things flowing correctly and like, um, for example feedback on staff's new job role needs to come shortly after the job role has been undertaken. If it's left too long the staff could be working inefficiently and can be unhappy. If you deal with the problem quickly uh, by quick feedback then you'll have a better managed change. All right. Activate strategies to embed the change. A change has only been successful once there is no thought of doing things the way that they were done before. When there, is the changes, when there is this, the change is embedded within the company. There has to be carefully planned. After all this hard work, people can still try and return to the, hard, the, the old ways of working. You can help to embed the change in a number of ways. Firstly, by modelling the behaviours yourself, people are more likely to follow what you are doing if it's the right way. Number two, challenge those who are not following the change, giving feedback as to how to improve the actions to follow the new plan. Number three, Monitoring the effects of the change and how people are reacting to it and then publishing the results of this monitoring. People want to be seen to be doing the right thing and if you publish a, you know, statistics saying that they're not, they're more likely to follow suit. Alright, number four, 
seeking feedback as to how people are finding the changes. As a result of the feedback, slightly modifying procedures were necessary to make them easier to follow. If you plan to embed the changes in these ways from the beginning of the project, then they're much more likely to stick. These strategies cannot be an afterthought. And finally, evaluate the review the change. Once the change plan has been implemented, it is important to continue to review the effects to see if the desired objectives have been met. You want to check that the end results you set out for are what's happening in the real time. Evaluating the change can be done by reviewing data, sales figures, productivity, losses, reports, etc. By review and feedback from all levels or simply by monitoring the change management plan and whether what is happening uh, on the ground is what you said it should be on paper. If the case that these things are different from the end goals proposed, then you may need to take action to get them back on track. This could be through contingency plans, changing original objectives or learning from mistakes that were made. Thank you.